would you say uh, when you look at these coaches, so the Beamers, father and son, um, yes. and there's others around the country, I think that that you will probably pop into your head as I'm talking about this. But some of these coaches that are very like, I don't want to say system driven, but we'll say that for like, but system driven that sort of, you know, Beamer ball, right? Yes. Um, that, that have very strong philosophies that they are entrenched in that guide all of their decision making. Uh, that is probably, you know, coaches that operate this way. I think they do it to take emotion out of the equation that, you know, they are guided by their philosophy at all times. I feel like those coaches win a lot of football games, but they seem to struggle to go off script when necessary to get that big win, to take that risk. Um, I don't want to say they don't have any balls, but a little bit, it feels like, I mean, and Marcus Freeman may turn out to be this type of coach, truthfully. I mean, the way things have, we'll see, right? He's got the chance to to not, to rewrite the story a little bit here. He's still very early in his career, but very system driven. His philosophy um, drives a lot of his decision making. I think the greats really become, uh, they really excel at going off script in the most important moments. And I don't want to say like going with their gut because I feel like that's weird, but they just have like a knack um, for making, they're pushing the right buttons at the right time. I mean, sometimes you have to look at a situation and make a different decision than you normally would. If you look at Frank Beamer in, in this example, one of the biggest things that we saw over the time that I was there and then even afterward was, yeah, they did a lot of winning, but they never, like they, they kind of had the same Marcus Freeman feel to them. They were never explosive and they never had an offensive scheme that matched what was the rising tide of offense in the ACC. And you saw what happened as recruiting changed and everything changed in the landscape, they started falling down. Another guy that I think about and rest in peace, Mike Leach, kind of the same way. Now the air raid is a completely different thing and he had a ton of success. A lot of guys threw for a lot of yards, but Mike Leach teams notably eight and four a lot, right? There weren't a lot of playoff caliber Mike Leach teams because as much winning as he did and as good of a football coach as he was, never could win the big game. And maybe it's to your point that he was a system guy. There's probably a ton of guys that are like that. And you have to adapt. Nick Saban won national championships at two schools, right? But he also coached at how many? I mean, he was yeah. successful at Michigan State, LSU, Alabama. And you know why he failed in the NFL? He didn't adapt. That's why. Well, it, he he ended up having to adapt, right? I think at Alabama. Yes, as, he did. As the as as offensive football started to evolve very rapidly, he you know that's when all of a sudden you saw, saw him really up the ante with these offensive coordinator hires, the Bill O'Briens, the Lane Kiffins, the Sarks, um, and so on. And so like you know, because he was a very and, and still his stamp was still on the offense, but he really he brought in guys who were experts, who were offensive minded guys, and for the most part, let them run their offense. And I think that that served him extremely well um, in his time at Alabama. And I think that I'm hoping that Marcus Freeman can ultimately get to that point too. But yeah, he had to, you know, shift his perspective and his philosophy a little bit. And, you know, you mentioned Mike Leach. I'm sure there's a lot of people that probably watched games and were like, man, Mike, if you would just like, you know, if you would just, Run the football. Run the football. <laughs> yeah. If you could just swallow your pride a little bit. And I love Mike Leach. We love him here. And, and like I said, RIP. But always have. If you, would just, if you would just swallow your pride for a minute and just run the freaking football, you could win this game. And, uh, you know, his offenses were explosive by nature. Uh, but there's times you don't always have to be explosive either. Sometimes you have to know when to just run the ball. Yes. So we did get a comment. And we're going to talk about this because I think it's actually a good philosophical question. But to add to your point, Saban didn't just adapt on the field. Look at what happened in recruiting too. Remember, we used to always say that, or I used to, that Alabama was winning. And can you imagine what would happen when they got a quarterback? Because they had right. Greg McElroy's, AJ McCarron's, they're winning national championships or going to national championships. After that, Tua, Jalen Hurts. I mean, Mac Jones is, an, is, right. is a different guy, but Jalen Milrow, he changed the way that he went recruiting. All the wide receivers, instead of running backs, it was wide receivers that they started having. And so he changes philosophy, but your dad brings up a good point about analytics. And this sort of, I think it's more applicable to the NFL. I don't know how much it comes into play in college because I think it might be a little bit different. But this again speaks to the idea of adaptation because Dan Campbell, big analytics guy, and he got kind of raked over the coals for being so married to analytics. And you said, well, you go with what got you there but it kind of goes against a little bit of the adaptation. Maybe adap yep. adapting is different in college than it is in the NFL. I don't know, 
but analytics is here to stay for certain. Like there's there's no going back. Well, I know, and it's funny because uh, not to keep bringing up Marcus Freeman, but again, he has like an analytics guy on staff that's literally next to him on the sideline at all times. Um, so he's very entrenched in analytics as well. And so it's, uh, and it, it drives a lot of his decision making. And so it is funny, like to see the parallels that are there between him and what we talked with Dan Campbell and me sitting there like begging Marcus Freeman to like break away from the analytics a little bit. But then last year, um, saying, Hey, man, like just dance with who brung you sort of deal. Uh, with uh, MCDC, so uh, definitely some uh, hypocrisy there on my part, no doubt That's about that. Ask. But I'm, uh, you know, I come on. Like, if there's any hypocrisy, 